screen share.
Good morning. Welcome to our online worship service of Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. I invite you to follow along in the order of service. We will put the link in the chat. Whomever you are and wherever you have come from, for this hour, we here are one gathered congregation and all are welcome. My name is Edward Laws. I have been part of KUF for a year and I'm a member of the Settled Ministry Task Force. Our worship leader this morning is our own Reverend Jessica Star Rockers. We'd like to welcome any visitors. Please introduce yourselves in our chat box. We welcome more interaction with all during our after service Zoom coffee hour. The link for our coffee hour will go into the chat next. You will need to use the password coffee to be admitted to the coffee hour. We hope you will join us for fellowship. Announcements are available on our webpage www.kuf.org or our weekly email newsletter, The Candle. We would like to start today by acknowledging that the land on which we all live is the Aboriginal territory of the Suquamish, the Sklalem and the Skokomish people. They have lived in harmony with the lands and waterways along Washington Central Salish Sea for thousands of years. These tribes still live here and protect the land and waters of their ancestors for future generations as promised by the Point Elliot Treaty of 1855. Now please enjoy Brian Kenny, Alina Hemingway and Mike Menifee performing our call to worship, Look In My Heart. Now please join me in lighting our chalice. If you have your own chalice or a candle at home, please light it as we say these words. Our chalice lighting words are in the order of service and will appear on your screen. Every endeavor begins with a first step and encounters darkness and difficulty along the way. We know the darkness of ignorance, of fear and of tyranny. Yet we know the dawning of the light, the beginnings of hope and the renewal of life. Blessed be the eternal power which inspires us to kindle this light. Blessed be the source of light and of life. Amen. Our opening hymn is Just As Long As I Have Breath. The tune for this hymn was composed by Johann A. Georg Ebeling, who lived in the 1600s and was the music director at the St. Nicholas Church in Berlin, Germany, and taught music in Stettin, Poland. The harmonization was revised by John Edwin Giles during the second half of the 1900s. He was the director of music at the Unitarian Church of Evanston, Illinois. 
The lyrics were written by Alicia Carpenter, a Unitarian Universalist singer and songwriter from Ithaca, New York in Garden Ridge, Texas. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, Just As Long As I Have Breath. Number six in the gray hymn book. The lyrics will appear on your screen. Please join me in the spoken affirmation. The words are in the order of service and will appear on your screen. We gather as a caring community seeking life's deeper meanings. We value diversity and affirm the worth of all living things. We strive to speak truth in love, to act for justice, to grow in spirit and to care for the earth. We celebrate with open hearts and minds the creative power that sustains and transforms us. Now it's the time for our morning offering. If you would like to donate electronically, please click on the PayPal me link in the chat. You may then email admin at kuuf.org to let us know if your donation is for the KUUF General Fund or the Minister's Discretionary Fund to help our members in need or for our monthly charitable giving recipient for the month of November, the Q Center, which provides resources and a safe place for gender and sexual minority youth. Mm -hmm. You may also check, send a check to the address on the screen. Please write in the memo line to which of the funds your offering should go. If this is your first time at KUUF, you are our guest, so there's no need to contribute. Let there be an offering to strengthen and sustain our community, which is sacred to so many of us. everyone, I'm Reverend Jessica, and it is time for our children's story. So I invite the young and the young at heart to scooch a little bit closer to the screen. Today we are going to listen to a story called The Invisible String. 
This is a story about the power of love and the connections of our hearts that keep us together no matter how far apart we are. The Invisible String by Patrice Karst Liza and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep one calm and quiet night. Suddenly it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, Mommy, they cried out as they ran to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. Mom said, you know, we're always together, no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Liza. Mom held something right in front of them and said, this is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what Mom was holding. I was about your age when my mommy first told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there? asked Liza. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel it tug on my heart. And when you tug it right back, we feel it in our hearts, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string? Liza asked. She sure does, said Mom. And best friends like me and Lucy, asked Liza. Best friends too. How far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, Mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean? asked Jeremy. Yes, Mom said, even there. Or a mountain climber? Even there. A dancer in France? Even there. A jungle explorer? Even there. How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, Can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Yes, even there. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never, said Mom. Love is stronger than anger, and as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older, and can't agree about things like what movie to see or what game to play in the back seat or what time to go to bed. Oh, that's right. You two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as Mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have and all the strings their friends have and their friends have and their friends have until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they now could clearly see. No one is ever alone.
And now let us sing our song, this little light of mine. And we'll let our lights shine out together, knowing we are connected, no matter how far apart we are. You ready? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine for you and for me. For you and for me, I'm gonna let it shine. For you and for me, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Very nice. I appreciated the improvisation. <laughs> and thank you for singing along as well. Now it is the time in our service for our joys and our sorrows. Though we are physically distanced from one another, as we know from our story today, our hearts and our spirits remain connected. When shared together, our joys are amplified and our sorrows lessened. If you have a personal joy or sorrow to share, I invite you to write it in the chat this morning. Ginny shares, joyful for the success of the KUUF auction and thankful for the team who made it happen. I agree with that. Ed Luby also says, joy that our auction is so successful. We all share in that deep gratitude today. Alan and Ellen, probably, congratulations, KUUF. You have helped achieve our budgeted goal of $14,000. Keep bidding, though. There are still lots of great bargains. Kirsten, Ember, and Edward share joy that we get to celebrate the birthday of Grandpa Ed Hughes today. Happy birthday, Grandpa Ed. Maya and Amelia, joy that our family is doing an autumn ball this afternoon, dancing. How fun, I hope you have a great time. Take pictures. Lena shares happy birthday to my son Stein, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday, Stein. So glad you get to be together on your birthday. Liz, concern for my neighbor who is struggling with many stresses. New job, dying sister and trying to manage online learning for her children. Well, our hearts go out to your neighbor, Liz. May she be blessed with strength.
Francis Sorrow, that family member tested positive for COVID. Francis, we're holding you and your family member in our heart. Ellie, joy for a sunny walk along the beach this morning with Sherlock. Nature restores my spirits. I share that joy with you. Ginny, joy of a bike ride this morning and the beautiful Canadian geese in flight. What a joy. Rowan, joy that my family was able to make a socially distanced visit and we could see each other without the need for screens. What a joy. Jill is sad that family Thanksgiving is canceled. Sharing that sorrow with you, Jill. And Liz and Brian, joy from Brian for the people who take care of our KUUF building and grounds even when we're not meeting in person. Much joy and gratitude for our grounds, building and grounds committee and for everybody who works on the grounds at KUUF. Joey, my joy is that my bike is finally fixed and I can go for rides with Beast now, how fun. Lori, joy that I finished my first quarter with A's. Congratulations, Lori, I know how hard you've been working. Chris, for the wind, that blows across the sky. Thank you for that. Jessica, concern for Nathan's aunt and uncle who are battling COVID. Holding them in our hearts. In the light of healing. Um, and Mrs. McCall says sorrow for my young nephew who has been diagnosed with a troubling mental illness and I can't travel to support him. Oh, that's Rebecca. Rebecca, our hearts are with you and your family. Lori shares joy that my roommate went through COVID with little pain. That is a joy. We're sharing that with you. Well, thank you everyone for sharing this morning. May you who shared feel the love of this community surrounding you and holding you close. And for all those whose joy or sorrow is too tender to share, our hearts are with you. May the spirit of life and love bring peace to us all. Amen and blessed be. There's a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it is hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen. People get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread.
Well, when I was studying pastoral ministry, preparing for my work as a hospital chaplain, I was asked to create something called a genogram. A genogram is a diagram of a family tree, but it goes a bit deeper than a traditional family tree. Beyond just genetic relationships, it connects emotional relationships, patterns of behavior, psychological factors, and health or disease. All of this to identify what it is we actually inherit in our family systems and how we pass a lot of these things on unconsciously generation after generation. Identifying one's own personal genogram is part of the self-awareness required to provide good ministry, and especially quality pastoral care. But I also think it is just a useful practice for everyone to sit down and consider intentionally the threads of our story, the threads that lead to us and the ones that extend from us and how we, in each of our family systems, impact the world around us. When I created my genogram, I was well aware of some of the less desirable traits that I had inherited from my family. By that point, I had already spent considerable time in my life examining what 12-step groups call our defects of character. I'd already practiced having compassion for those that passed along the same harm that had been passed along to them, our shared character defects. The genogram has lines of relationship between people, blue for dysfunctional and gold for healthful. And I started to draw these lines, the blue ones quickly at first with sorrow but familiarity, no surprises there, then the gold ones. As a genogram begins to take form, you can see the interdependent web in all its glory. The lines of this family tree don't just go from grandparent to parent to child. These lines go all over the place. They create a web of relationship, a web of emotion. And it shows how the individual threads deeply influ influence the web of the whole. It became apparent to me how central each of my grandmothers were to the lives of both sides of my family. But what I marveled at was the transformation that had taken place at the nexus of their lives. For each of them, the threads that connected to them were often blue, difficulty, pain, obstacles to their happiness and harm. But the threads that extended from them the relationships they cultivated as adults were gold. So many gold threads going everywhere. I remember seeing this and feeling so overwhelmed with gratitude. I mean, I knew that my grandmothers were both loving, compassionate people. I had certainly benefited from their love and care. What I didn't realize until it was right there on the paper was how much their acts of kindness and caring and love changed everyone and everything around them. And I became aware of my own power to transform what occurred at the nexus of my life and how this could influence the web of my family, the web of my community, the story of my life in ways that I would never and could never know. And I saw right there in blue and gold how compassion and love are truly more powerful than hurt and pain. In our children's story today, we heard about the invisible strings that link us one to the other, how these strings, these threads are connected, no matter how close or far apart we are, and how they remain even after death. They transcend even our physical beings. When I read this story, I immediately thought of the genogram. When these strings are threads of love, gold threads, we feel the warmth of connection. We feel the love and support of our community and our ancestors, and a oneness with all that is sacred and holy. But it's true that sometimes these threads are the blue ones. Sometimes we have been connected with people or places or situations that don't feel loving, and we can't disconnect from them they are part of our story. 
And as we mature, we often come to realize it is up to us to practice compassion even when we hurt, even when we haven't been supported, so that we can be a nexus of transformation and change those blue threads into gold ones, so that the invisible strings of connection that go to our children and our grandchildren, our nieces and nephews, or anyone really with whom we share deep relationship, that those strings are loving, supportive, and reassuring. This is one of the reasons we go to church, to remind ourselves of who we are called to be, and to be in a community of people who share this same understanding, that we will send out threads of love. No matter what has been poured into us, we are committed to pouring out love into the world. But here's the question, the question that is sitting beneath this shared understanding. How? How do we become, as individuals and as a system, as a congregation, how do we become a nexus of transformation? Which is really the question of how do we heal ourselves, our community, and ultimately the world? The William Stafford poem we heard today, read so beautifully by Brian Watson, titled The Way It Is, gives us some clues. Follow the thread. Hang on to it. People will wonder and you'll have to explain, but don't ever let go of the thread. One of the gifts of Unitarian Universalism is that when we come in the door of a UU congregation, virtually or physically, we don't have to leave any of ourselves behind. We do not have to conform our stories to fit some narrative of what is holy, rejecting pieces of ourselves because someone has determined those threads of our lives are unacceptable. In this faith, we believe that all of it is holy. This is our universalism. All of it is sacred. We don't have to cut any of the threads that extend to our lives, the gold threads or the blue threads or any combination of colors. All of it is holy. And our Unitarianism tells us that in addition to it being holy, it is also all connected. It is all one piece, all woven together. When we cut one thread, we risk losing them all. We risk the integrity of the whole web. And when you begin to pursue healing, you discover there are more than just blue or gold threads. Some threads, it is impossible to tell what color they are. And some threads are somehow both blue and gold. And real healing is messy. There's no way to do it perfectly. Even my beloved grandmothers were not perfect. The gold threads that extended from their lives on my genogram were the story of love. But even those threads had flecks of blue, and the blue threads had flecks of gold. These things coexist. Together they weave a rainbow, and we do our best to follow the threads of love while honoring the beauty of the rainbow design. And no matter what, we don't let go. It takes courage to follow the thread. We must be brave to not let go. It takes courage to believe that love is more powerful than hate. And let me be clear. Hanging on and claiming all the threads of our lives, transforming the pain into love and compassion, does not mean we ever have to stay literally connected to people that harm us. Perhaps this goes without saying, but I want to say it anyway. We can let go of harmful people and situations while acknowledging they will forever be a thread in our story. And that our healing means we see this thread, we honor it, and we commit ourselves to its transformation. One of the reasons that I encountered the genogram and was asked to create this visual representation of the threads of my life and relationships is because all of it informs my ministry. Not just the loving ones, but every thread. And when we take these threads of our lives and embark on a journey of healing, when we think we might want to share this healing with others, 
we become what Carl Jung calls wounded healers. And our wounds become our gifts. The love that we share with the world is not shared in spite of the pain we've experienced, but is deeply informed by it. When we have been through an experience that has primarily consisted of blue threads and we come out the other side, we carry with us an important wisdom. Rather than letting it harden our hearts, we have the opportunity in that moment to allow the experience to make us more compassionate, more loving, more kind. Our Unitarian ancestor, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, there is a crack in everything God has made. And the Sufi poet Rumi wrote, the wound is the place where the light enters you. While songwriter Leonard Cohen combined these two sentiments and sang, there is a crack in everything, that's how the light gets in. I would say it is also how the light gets out. And the real poetry here is that it actually can't get out without the crack place where our threads of connection go in and out, the blue threads and the gold ones and all the other colors, it's the same place. And in ways inexplicable and mysterious and deeply sacred, they are profoundly and endlessly interconnected. I wonder if we created a genogram of the history of our country, we know, we know we would see an enormous amount of blue threads but we would see gold ones as well. Those of us who are committed to taking what appears to be the worst of humanity and learning from it and transforming it into love and justice. At the nexus of our lives, of our congregation's life, we can't always control what wounds occur, what threads enter, the complicated pain of our experiences, but we can face it, name it, honor it all as a part of the journey, and commit ourselves to healing, to transformation, to compassion and love. During times of stress and uncertainty, when we don't always know what to hang on to, we know the sacred thread, the thread of love and kindness. This is always the thread to follow. When everything else around us is in flux, this is the thread that doesn't change. Pete Seeger wrote, if I had a golden thread and a needle, I would weave a magic strand of rainbow design. I would bind up this sorry world with my hands and my heart and my mind. May we commit ourselves again this day to the path of healing to loving the world into wholeness, loving the world into wholeness with our hands and our hearts. Let us hang on tightly to that thread, that thread of beloved community, that thread of liberation and love.
Well, now it is time for our intention setting. I invite you to take a breath today and set an intention. Choose your word for the week ahead. You can choose a word or a phrase to inspire you this week. And if you feel called to, you can put it in the chat and share it with us so I can read it aloud. We can share in your intention setting as a community. Breathe. Thank you, Ted. Spin some gold. Thank you. Confidence. Progress. Let love shine through fear. Maya says love forever and wherever. I like that. From Terry, honor all the threads. To see the beauty. Optimism. Breathe kindness. Love all. Kindness. Loving service. Learn to listen. Thankfulness. Be more, do less. That's a good one. Flexible. Build fellowship. Be brave. Thank you everyone for sharing your intentions. Your words reverberate in our hearts, in our breathing. Now for our closing hymn, Love Will Guide Us. Well, thank you everyone for being here today. 
Please join us after this for coffee hour. The link and the password will appear on your screen and they'll appear in the chat and you can click on the link in the chat and it will take you right to the coffee hour and the password is coffee with a capital C. And the question for our small groups during coffee hour is how do you hang on to that thread of love? And I also want to remind you, it's very important, that our auction ends this evening at 5 p.m. We have done really well. As you heard earlier in the service, as of this morning, we have met our goal, but we don't need to stop there. So let's give it a final push. And I'm actually going to put the link in the chat just in case you haven't had a chance to look at it even yet. Today is your last chance to participate. You can bid on a cool item like Henry's famous chocolate chip cookies or a visit from a flock of pink flamingos. It's true. So let's support our beloved community. And a big thank you one last time to everyone who has donated, everyone who has bid, everyone who participated in our auction night event, and most especially to our auction team. A deep, deep vow of gratitude to you all for the amazing work that you have done. And now, let us extinguish our chalices. And let me close with these words from activist L.R. Nost. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break and all things can be mended, not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go, love intentionally, extravagantly and unconditionally. The broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. Amen, Ashe, may it be so. Blessings on your week, everyone. Thank you.